But we first get back to our top story as we are joined by North Carolina Congressman uh, Mark Meadows, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, both leaders of the Freedom uh, Caucus. All right, Jim, I'll start with you tonight. Sure. And so this is what we get. Yep. A man's life ruined. All of these other people have committed crimes that we know of. The information obtained on General Flynn was obtained illegally. Yep. Okay. They put his family through hell. He has to sell his house. They threaten his family or he falls on the sword and, and signs something he knows is not true so they don't go after his family. Is that justice in America? No, it's not. And your monologue was right on target, Sean. Remember, James Comey, director of the FBI, fired. Deputy Director McCabe lied three times under oath, fired. Chief counsel at the FBI, Jim Baker, demoted, then left. FBI counsel Lisa Page, demoted, then left. And deputy head of counterintelligence, Peter Strzok, demoted, then fired. But even those five people thought Mike Flynn didn't lie when he was interviewed by the FBI. Only Bob Mueller did, and now this is what happened. So we got to keep this in context. The top people at the FBI, all demoted, left, or fired, who launched and ran the Clinton investigation, launched and ran the Russian investigation, put the fake dossier in front of the FISA court to get a warrant to spy on the Trump campaign, even they didn't think Mike Flynn lied when he was being interviewed by the FBI. And now Bob Mueller is saying he should get the lenient, most lenient sentence possible, but they still have the information he gave him. We'll find out what that is when we get the unredacted version of what Catherine was referring to tonight. Listen, I, I'm, but I'm, I'm looking seriously, Mark Meadows, through all of this here, and what they're saying here, days prior to the FBI's interview of the defendant, Washington Post published a story alleging he had spoken with uh, Russia's ambassador to the United States on December 29th. Wouldn't it be a normal process for an incoming uh, director such as General Flynn to have conversations with his soon-to-be counterparts about important issues, even a change of policy um, that might be coming or different points of view that they may have, considering we have diametrically opposed views between Obama and President Trump? Well, it would be a, a natural occurrence, and I can tell you there are Democrats and Republicans on the Hill that probably have had a lot more conversations with the Russian ambassador than yeah. Mike Flynn ever thought about having. And, and, and yet, here we are tonight looking at a three-star general being held guilty for missing a date and perhaps not recalling something. But here's the other thing that we've got to remember, Sean, is this. I've looked at this report, and yes, everybody's going to focus on what has been redacted. But let's look at what's not in there. There is no suggestion that Michael Flynn had anything to do with collusion. He was with the transition team. He was part of the campaign. And yet there's no mention of collusion. I think it's good news for President Trump tonight that this is what it's come down to, even though they said he substantially cooperated, I think he substantially cooperated to say that there was no collusion, and we can look at it with that in mind. Well, let me look, Jim Jordan, I'll read to you. The Post queried whether the defendant's actions violated the Logan Act. The Logan Act is 18 U.S.C. 953. Yeah. It's old, but a, a rarely invoked federal statute prohibiting unauthorized private diplomacy with foreign nations. Uh, it is, ne I think, maybe, what, five or six times it's been used, and in most instances yeah, the people get off innocent. So this is what they're, they're suggesting in, in this, and that he was speaking, you know, as part of the, the president's incoming team, transition right. team, that they had spoken to the defendant, that he denied speaking to the Russian ambassador about sanctions, which the president had already said publicly, if I'm not mistaken, yep. that, in fact, oh, uh, there's no, you know, that that's probably going to be what our policy is. That's it? That This yeah. is what this is about? No, I, I know. And it, it, when you look at the larger framework, for, of course, first of all, he's a national security advisor. Of course, he's going to be talking to foreign dignitaries. That's, that's going to be, and he's going to be doing that in the transition. And you're exactly right, right what the president had said earlier. But I, I keep trying to bring this back to, into a context. The guy we need to talk to, Sean, while, we're, while the left is making all kinds of hay about this, this story tonight about Mr. Flynn, the guy we need to be talking to is Rod Rosenstein. 
It has been 10 and a half weeks since it was reported that he talked to subordinates about wearing a wire and invoking the 25th Amendment. And Mark and I and other members of Congress have yet to be able to ask him one single question since that became public. That needs to happen in the next 26 days before Nancy Pelosi is Speaker of the House. That's what I'm focused on. This is news tonight. I get it. And we've walked through this. But that's the real thing we have to focus on in the last few weeks of this Congress. Let me go back to Mark Meadows. Uh, Congressman, if you go back to the House Intelligence Committee report, Comey testified that FBI agents saw no, saw no physical indications of deception. Now, that includes McCabe, that includes mm. Comey, and that includes Peter Strzok, of all people that interviewed him. They didn't think he lied. And, you know, and, and this sends a very bad message to everybody, and that is... Boy, you better never talk to the FBI, even though you might be inclined because you have, I grew up with reverence for this great institution. You better never, unless you're a Democrat, then you can say anything you want. But then you, you're covered. That's what I take out of it. Well, I, I think here's the, it's not just in the House intel. Jim and I have been part of, of testimony and briefings and questioning where that was reiterated not once, not twice, but three different times that they didn't believe that Mike Flynn lied. So so here's, here's what we've got. We've got a situation where uh, we're a year and a half into this investigation. It started back in May of 2017, and here we are uh, in December. If this is the best we've got coming out of uh, Mueller's uh, investigation. It is time that he writes the report, closes it out, and let the American people focus on what is important to them, which is really about making sure they keep their jobs in the economy and what the president has been delivering on. So it's time for Mueller to bring it to a close. Hopefully this is the beginning of the end, but uh, it can come none too soon for most Americans. It's amazing to me, Jim, as I read through this, they're quoting the Washington Post. I'll give you one example, and then they talk again about 18 U.S.C. 950 that's the Logan Act. And mm -hmm. subsequent to the post, they, they literally quote the Washington Post and an article. Prior to the defendant's FBI interview, members of President-elect Trump's transition team, I, I think they might be talking about Vice President Pence, publicly stated that they had spoken to the defendant and that he denied speaking to the Russian ambassador about the sanctions. Look, I don't know what your guys' lives are like. I can tell you what my life is like. The number of conversations I have on yeah. a daily basis... If you ask me who I talked to yesterday, I will not be able to recall with any sense of certainty. Uh, most people live busy lives. I was there. Right. I watched this. This was as busy at a time as anything else. And I'm sure there were a lot of pleasantries given back and forth. Look forward to working for you. You know, we're going to work on a lot of issues together, which would seem perfectly appropriate to me. Yeah, look, and if they thought he said something that wasn't accurate, why not circle back with him? After all, he served our country, was a three-star general. Why not circle back with him? And as we pointed out several times, the FBI, these key people, the same FBI who I think took something to the FISA court that they didn't check out themselves, that's, those same people said, we didn't think he was misleading us at all. But if there was some kind of question, give the, circle back to the general and find out instead of using it to get the information that looks like Mr. Mueller was trying to get. You know, one of the other well, things Sean, they Sean, talk about. One, yeah, Mark, Sean, one other thing. Uh, yeah, one other thing that we've got to realize, Jim and I have been in these interviews and testimony. There is a whole lot more that we can look at in terms of the, the conversations that, that FBI agents and previous agents have had that call into question whether they're being truthful or not than what we see with, with uh, General Flynn. And this Logan Act, it's a relic of a bygone era. It was meant to Design and designed to say, we want to make sure you're speaking on behalf of a legitimate government. It's time that we look at this in a very different yes. light. Yeah, All right. I think we have to look at it a different light. I just gave you, Mark, a, a list. We just laid it out for us. Cheryl right. Mills, Uma Abedin, all these people that lied before Congress, all of them. We know that they lied. Then we have Hillary Clinton. We, James Comey wrote this exoneration in early May with Peter Strzok. He lied and said he wasn't beginning the writing of that exoneration. That's a lie by him. By the way, he also might have issues with the Espionage Act when he leaked the information to his professor friend for the very purpose of getting it to the New York Times so that might spark the appointment of a special counsel. He should have the same legal jeopardies. Hillary's, you know, mom-and-pop shop bathroom closet server, 
Uh, we believe at least six foreign entities hacked into it. We know it's a violation of the Espionage Act. We know that her aides emailed that very site and had email addresses from that site. I don't see any of them going through what a 33-year veteran, five years of combat veteran, has gone through, guy that served his country. Do you? I, why is there this no. double standard? Well, there is a double standard, and, and it means that if you're associated with the Trump team, the Trump campaign, and the Trump administration, you come under greater scrutiny than a lot of other people that have been here and playing the game here in Washington, D.C. That must come to an end. Yep. It will come to an end. Guys like Jim and I are willing to hold them accountable. But enough with the talk. Let's get Rod Rosenstein in here and make sure that he testifies and, and actually tells the American people what he said or well, didn't say. I have a tape of we played it the other night Jim Jordan of, of James Comey literally saying well I lie you know I've lied and and McCabe lied but you can still lie and be a good person the exact words of James Comey Sean J uh, James Comey was saying he didn't want to come testify in, in a closed-door session with Congress because of leaks this is the guy who leaked the information to the New York Times to create the momentum for the special counsel so come on Mark is exactly right you're exactly right there's two standards one for us right. regular folk, a different set if you're part of the political establishment. That's what drives Americans crazy. All right. Thank you both. Freedom Caucus members, Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, we appreciate it.